Hey guys, I'm Richard Oldner and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at a nitrous injected 383 LS stroker and here's the question. Is there something besides the internal strength of the combination that limits how much nitrous we can run? Before we get started our discussion on nitrous, we first have to have a discussion about our test motor. And the reason for that is that it's something that a lot of guys have trouble understanding when we're talking about nitrous and the same thing happens with boost, whether we're running it from a turbo or centrifugal blower, roots blower, you know, twin screw, any kind of positive displacement deal. With nitrous, a lot of guys seem to think that you have to have a specific kind of camshaft for nitrous, or you have to have a sp specific kind of cylinder head for nitrous, or even specific intake manifolds for nitrous. And the reality is that that's not true. What happens with nitrous is if you add a hundred shot of nitrous to a motor, if you add to a stock one, it's going to add a hundred horsepower. The only time it doesn't do that is if you're trying to add it to a stock motor that only makes 50 horsepower to begin with. Then you have a hard time for that motor to actually process a hundred horsepower with the nitrous because it doesn't have enough motor. But for most of these things where we're talking about a four or five or 600 horsepower NALS combination, if you add a hundred horsepower with the nitrous to it, it's going to add a hundred horsepower. And I have yet to see some kind of camshaft or some kind of cylinder head or intake manifold make that different than what I'm describing here. But let's take a look at our test motor. And this was actually a 383 stroker. So it started out basically as a 5.3 liter block. And then we bored and stroked it to increase the displacement. So we'll take a look at our description here. We have a 383 stroker. It is a 5.3 truck block. We have bored it from 3780 to 3902. We've obviously installed new pistons in it, and we've combined that with a four inch stroke crank. We put flat top pistons in it with valve relays from Molly, and then we put uh, forge rods and um, a stroker crank, a forge stroker crank from the guys at Speedmaster. We all, they also supplied the CNC ported LS1 style cathedral port cylinder heads that we put on here. And to get this thing to make power, at least decent power, we put a fairly healthy camshaft in it. It was a crane uh, camshaft that had 590 lift, both on the intake and exhaust. It had a 224-232 degree duration split at 115 degree lobe separation angle. We topped all of this stuff, stuff off with a fast LSXRT intake manifold and 102 millimeter throttle body. And then a set of the engine 7 8 headers. 42 pound injectors in the fast, uh, or the, or rather the Holly HP management system. This thing ran best with 29 and a half degrees. So 29, 30 degrees of total timing. And we ran this combination with these heads with a set of 7.3 inch push rods, because that's what the combination wanted when we measured it all out. So run in this configuration, our board and stroke 5.3 or 383 with heads, cam and intake manifold, obviously had a little more compression too, because it had a flat top piston and more displacement but it produced 544 horsepower and 514 foot-pounds of torque. And note that it made over 450 uh, foot-pounds of torque, even down around 3000 RPM. And to put this into perspective, I'm going to show you what a typical junkyard 5.3 does in comparison to this 383 before we added the nitrous. So this, the red line is a stock 5.3 liter. They usually make between 545 and 500, or 345 to 355 horsepower. And this one made 379 foot-pounds of torque. So somewhere in the 375 to 385, depending on what kind of condition they're in. Obviously a lot of these that we get a really, really high mileage and some of them the ring seal is better and stuff on those. But this is a pretty good example of what we would come to expect from a typical 5.3 liter and as you can see we've picked up a ton of horsepower we picked up over 200 horsepower doing the modifications to our 383 you know stepping up in displacement so it's worked out very well but now let's take a look and see what happened when we added nitrous to our 383. now that we've taken a look at what happens when we upgrade our 5.3 liter to 383 status with the performance mods i mentioned heads cam intake obviously displacement and compression stuff so we picked up over 200 horsepower and our thing was making 544 horsepower and 514 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what happened when we added this simple, you know, plate nitrous system in front of the throttle body. Actually, it's designed to be sandwiched between the throttle body and the intake manifold. And this is basically a wet fogger system, meaning that we're injecting both the nitrous and the fuel together 
through this plate and it's all going into the intake manifold. And we're going to talk about at the end of this what the problem is with that type of injection. At the, at the power level that we're talking about here, uh, we had nothing but good luck. But there's a limit to how far you can go with this. And basically, it's a function of the intake manifold design. But we'll get into that at the end of this discussion. So we ran our NA motor. And here's what happened when we put our ZEX perimeter plate on and added uh, jetting for about 100 horsepower. So power jumped up to from 644 to 660 horsepower. Peak torque was up to 655 foot-pounds. And this combination worked really well, as we have come to expect from nitrous. And there's an important thing to remember is that, as I said, when you add a, a jetting or the flow orifice so that you can add 100 horsepower worth of nitrous, um, it's important to, as to where you're going to add that. And by that, I mean which RPM you're running that at. So if you add 100 horsepower worth of nitrous, let's say it's 6,000 RPM, that equates to an increase of about 88 foot-pounds of torque. If you add that same 100 horsepower with the nitrous at 3,000 RPM, you're going to increase torque by 175 foot-pounds. If you were foolish enough to try that at 2,000 RPM and add 100 shot to it, you're going to increase torque production by 263 foot-pounds of torque. Because the mathematical equation for a horsepower torque is horsepower equals torque times RPM over 5252. And if you want to... Uh, settle for torque, then you take a look at torque equals horsepower times 5252 52 over RPM. So you can see that as we change RPM, if we activate that lower and lower, we get even bigger and bigger torque numbers, which is why they don't recommend, all the nitrous companies recommend that you don't hit your nitrous system like right off idle, obviously because bad things will happen. But we didn't start here, or we didn't stop here. Here's what happens when we ran a little bit more nitrous, 150 shot, because that's the thing about nitrous, it's like with boost, if you want to make more power, you simply add more nitrous flow. And as long as you have the corresponding reduction in timing and additional fuel supply so that you have a safe mixture, everything will work out fine. And this did. We pushed our 383 over 700 horsepower, 706 foot-pounds. And because of the spiky nature of what happens when we activate the nitrous on the dyno, we had 736 foot-pounds of torque. So good power from the nitrous, as I said. Whether we were adding this to a 383 or a 5.3 or a 4.8 or a 6.0 or whatever we were adding it to, this amount of nitrous is going to provide this kind of gain. The one exception is if you look at the very end of the 150 shot range, uh, between 6100 and 6500, the power started to tailor off. And that's not a function of anything that's happening with the combination. That's actually more a function of one of two things. It's got to be either the nitrous flow, and in this case, it's because the system was getting rich. So either the nitrous flow gets less because your bottle pressure is going down, or you have an excessively rich mixture out there, or maybe you've taken a ton of timing away. And in either case, that kind of thing is more of a tune than it is with not having the right camshaft or intake manifold or cylinder heads or any of the other things guys are worried about with nitrous. So now let's figure out why there's a problem with injecting all of the nitrous into the intake. Okay, guys, real quickly, our takeaway on this is that, yes, you can add lots of power with nitrous, and actually it doesn't matter what you're adding it to. As I said, if you add 100 shot of nitrous to a stock 5.3 liter, it's going to add 100 horsepower. And if you add 100 shot of nitrous to, like, our 383 stroker motor, it's going to add 100 horsepower. And if we add 150 like we did, it's going to add 150. And then the amount of torque that you get is basically going to be a function of what RPM you add that 100 shot at. And we covered all that. But one thing I do want to cover before we go is this. There's a limitation to how much nitrous you can inject into the motor, not based on the strength of the motor, although obviously that's true as well. But you run into problems injecting a wet nitrous system, whether it's a single fogger where we're injecting nitrous and fuel, like in the tube before the throttle body, or in our case, in a sandwich plate between the throttle body and the intake manifold. Anytime you're injecting the nitrous and the fuel before the throttle body, you run into a problem, a potential problem of distribution. And that has less to do really with the nitrous, because the nitrous is a gas tends to find its way fairly evenly to all the cylinders. It actually does very well in these long runner type intake manifolds that we see on LS applications and Coyotes and early five liter Mustangs and 
tune ports and hemis, you know, most of the modern things have these kinds of long rudder manifolds that are designed to only flow air. And the problem that they have, and this is what happens with these nitrous setups, if you're flowing nitrous and fuel, the fuel doesn't want to go in and distribute itself, eat, you know, stay in suspension and distribute itself evenly to all the cylinders. So what happens if you get let's say relatively even nitrous flow to all the cylinders, but you don't get even fuel flow to all the cylinders. One of the cylinders can get lean and really it only takes one cylinder to be bad and to damage it. And obviously, you know, none of these intake manifolds, as I said many times, I have other videos up where we've done distribution tests on long runner truck LS intake manifolds. And it's such a diabolical maze in there for the fuel and the nitrous to get through, let alone just air. But when you have these liquid fuels, trying to get evenly to all the runners can really be a problem. So when I recommend guys doing nitrous setups on these kind of wet fogger setups, I usually only recommend that they do 100, 150, maybe a 200 shot. But if you're really gonna get serious about adding nitrous, you need to do it to a different kind of intake manifold, like maybe a single plane kind of Victor Junior style, even with port injection on it, but a single plane common plenum manifold or just go to a direct port nitro setup where you have individual foggers in each cylinder. Armature holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.